Welcome back in for Grand Slam Sports Basketball, our second edition in the NBA season has officially tipped off yesterday, two games. Let's go ahead and begin with the first one right here, Lakers Nuggets ring ceremony for Denver and it ended with a win. I mean, yeah, that's exactly what you want to see if you're on Denver's side. I mean, this is a team that, you know, every single year we count them out. We just kind of look at them like, you know, they're okay. They just, they prove that they're just a phenomenal team. This team, every single starter in double figures, they looked great. Jokic doing what he does best. This is the only player I know that can win a championship, go race horses and relax in his country, come back and then continue his dominance. He takes the NBA as if it's like his day job. He just, exactly. he just walks in like any other person would. You know, he could, I think he'd rather be back home mm -hmm. racing horses than he would be in playing basketball. <laughs> I'm telling you, Nikola Jokic, we always talk about Tim Duncan. He's going to be the Tim Duncan of our generation where he retires and he's just gone. Like we never hear from him again. He won't show up to anything. He'll just like, it'll be like some random video like Nikola Jokic spotted after like four years to be him riding a horse in, Ser horse in Serbia. <laughs> I mean, the Lakers, LeBron James played decently. Anthony Davis didn't score second half, but they have a severe problem when LeBron is off the floor. And I saw something. LeBron is now limited to under 30 minutes a game for mm -hmm. the entire season. You can't beat good teams without the king on the floor yeah. with that roster. It's not like it's the Heat where they got Dwayne Wade. They got no. They have Anthony. I made it last Davis. And then they have a bench that doesn't really do much outside of their starting lineups. They don't do much. So if you don't have LeBron on the floor, what happens? Yeah. Offensively, it's just going to be stagnant. So what do you think happens there? I mean, you've got to find a way to get LeBron on the floor more. I mean, it's being under 30 minutes, they're going to struggle for the entirety of the season, really. Yeah. But I mean, Denver. I mean, they're just the you know they're the NBA champions for a reason. Mm. So I don't see why. You know, we should take one game and look at the Lakers like, like they're not a good squad. Yeah, I'm just concerned about that. You know, I get it. He's 40. Yeah. You want a long, long, you want to make his career longer. But like, is it really worth it if he's not playing that yeah. much? I mean, we'll see. I think it's it, it, it makes sense, but just not with the Russia that they have. Yeah. They, they can't do that and win games. I mean, if they're okay with being mediocre, then that's fine. But mm -hmm. if you're gonna win games, you gotta you know you gotta actually play your stars. Yeah. Did you see those rings last night? I did. They're gorgeous. I'm not compared to some I've seen before. I've seen some ones that are way better than what Denver made. But, I mean, they, they could slide out the ring. That's pretty cool, That's too. Cool. But, I mean, Denver getting the win. Jokic getting the win. They begin the season 1-0. and And I'm sure they might go back-to-back. -back. Very possible. But let's go ahead and move on to the other game last night. Phoenix and Golden State. How about this one? The Suns, the new-look Suns with Kevin Durant. Unfortunately, we didn't yeah. get to see... Bradley Beal, but still, the new, I mean, Kevin Durant put up a good night as expected. Devin Booker put up a good night as expected. And the Warriors are still the Warriors. I mean, but, this is, both of these two teams are teams that are top of the West. Yeah. And they, both of them are completely new, not completely new look, but they have some new identities. Yeah. Chris Paul putting on a Warriors jersey for the first time. He was just, you know, he played Chris Paul. And against his, like, his former squad. team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say that's, and losing. And losing, I mean, yeah, I, I would say that I expected the Suns to win this one. People have been bashing on the Suns because they don't have depth or they don't have this. They may, they, like I said, they, their whole bench is what I call kind of the reject club. It's a bunch of players that on their teams, they did not get time. But hey, on this team, you know, you got Bol Bol, you got Yuta Wananobi, players that like whenever they were playing on their teams did not get a lot of play mm -hmm. time. But now that they're playing with the Suns, a team that needs a bench, we're going to get to actually see how talented some of these guys are. I mean, even with the star power, too, once you get Beal back in the lineup, this team is star-studded. You know, this, this, these three right here, and Booker, Durant, and Beal, it's going to be hard to stop for any team in the Western Conference, maybe except for Denver. And I like it more than I like, because like, we all talk about the Nets offense whenever they, you know, got those three, the guy Kyrie, James Harden, and KD. Mm -hmm. The big question was, how do they all, you know, mesh together? Yeah. And it kind of showed these are three ISO players with this team, this team isn't as ISO. Bradley Beal's very good off the ball. Devin Booker's okay off the ball, but you can have two ball dominant players and be fine. But we saw with the Nets, we would see, oh, it either had to be Kyrie in hand or he's not gonna score. Had to be James Harden with that ball in his hand or he's not gonna score. KD can play off ball, but I mean, if you have two players that need the ball in their hands to do anything, mm -hmm. 
then you're going to have a problem. This is why I'm, I'm concerned for the Warriors. Chris Paul, I don't feel like he fits the system that Golden State likes to run. I mean, obviously, they're, I mean, they're missing Draymond Green, which is always a big loss, you know, defensive-wise. Yeah. But still, does Chris Paul fit in this offense the way the Warriors want him to? Play him at six men. I like that. I like that coming off the bench. If you don't have Curry in, mm -hmm. let's say he plays with Clay. You know, it's going to be a little bit harder for Clay to find his shots because they're going to be focusing more on him. But um, Chris Paul is very good at, you know, when he gets in the paint, he sees the court very yeah. well. And if you have shooters like he's not had in a very long time, he's going to find that open man. I like it off the bench. But when, if you have him starting, it's going to be really small. The team is going to just, it, they're going to get dominated in every aspect of the game other than maybe scoring. Yeah. But, I mean, if you, you don't want to go on a shootout with teams like the Suns or some of these tough yeah. teams. You want to actually you know, defend. Yeah. So, beginning with the Suns, where do you see them going from here off the big win to begin <clears> the season? I mean, I, I said it at the beginning of the uh, few weeks ago, I want to say, last, the, our first NBA segment. Mm -hmm. I said I got the Suns winning, or at least going to the finals. I still stand by that. This team is extremely talented, and they're talented in the right way. We see it in every single sport. People buy their way to championships, and it doesn't work. This team, they may have bought their way, but I think that they put three pieces together mm -hmm. that actually are going to fit very well. I think Bradley Beal is the definition of an unselfish superstar. I mean, we saw him suffer with the Wizards his whole career. Yeah. Put up 30 points as the number. You knew coming into a Wizards game, guard Bradley Beal. Yeah, yeah he still put up 30. What now? <laughs> And then, I mean, so where does Golden State fit in in the Western Conference, the stacked Western Conference now with Phoenix and Denver up at the top? You know, I remember last year the Celtics were like, don't let us get a win, don't let us get a win. All right? The Warriors are the definition, don't let them get in the playoffs. Because <laughs> if they get in the playoffs, they're very good. Now, in the regular season, they'll be okay. Yeah. They'll be fine. But if they get in the playoffs without having to play in the play-in and go against a mediocre team like a 4-5 or five seed, they have a very potential to knock off your favorite team. You know, you got the Nuggets coming in, one seed, you got the, the Warriors coming in as a five seed, let's say, and they, you know, they play in the second round. The Warriors are one of those teams that they can sneak attack you. They can take one or two, and then, you know, just like that, you're going against one of the best, point, the best point guard of all time, causing issues for you in the playoffs. And now the, the narrative has changed. Now we consider them an underdog taking out the big dog when they have been the big dog for the past five, six years, maybe even ten years with Curry and all them. As long as the Splash Bros are together, yeah. they're always going to be contenders. Yeah. I mean, that never changed. So their game is timeless, in my opinion, because even if Steph Curry is not as athletic as he used to be, he can I mean, be a great corner shooter yeah. until he's like 44. So, so, I mean, so you believe this is the best team in the West right here? I think that them and the Nuggets would be phenomenal the in a conference finals. Yeah. But I got the Suns. Uh, I got them. I think their Suns' offense is better than the Nuggets' defense. Mm -hmm. But the Nuggets' offense is not as good as this, you know what I mean. I think that they just got a little bit more going on. So we have, uh, we've discussed now both <clears throat> the Suns and Nuggets, one and two in the West. You believe who is that biggest threat to both of them and in the, in the third best team in the West? Is it Golden State or is it someone else? I would say that Golden State definitely. You know, they have that that threat factor. But a team that's going to be coming back. And they're not going to really be good until mediocre. I want to say they're going to be third, but a threat in the West, the Grizzlies. Okay. When they get John Moran back, that grit and grind is coming back in full effect. If Ja can stay smart and play, he's one of the best point guards in the league. With a pickup of Marcus Smart to take up that kind of Tony Allen role, you still have the defensive player of the year. That team is really good. It is. And people kind of forget about them because everyone hates John Moran. But once they get, if they can get in the playoffs and if they can get John Morant back, this team's going to be deadly. Yeah. Let's go ahead and look at some games upcoming <clears throat> and let's go in depth in some of them. Let's begin with your Celtics taking on the New York Knicks to open up their season. This will be a surprising good game. I think this game should be close, neck and neck. Um, I got the Celtics taking this one personally. I think it is not just because, you know, I'm a fan, obviously. Um, this team, in my opinion, have built the perfect starting lineup. Mm -hmm. They have. You know, Jalen Brown, he, he's struggling with his left hand, but if he can work on that, he's going to be a, he's a phenomenal threat. Jason Tatum, you know, one of the best players in the league. And then with the pickup with Drew Holiday. I mean, Drew Holiday, in my opinion, brings what Marcus, Marcus Smart brought to the Celtics, but more of an offensive threat. And that's the biggest issue is because you kind of knew, hey, we know JB and Jason Tatum, they never have good games simultaneously. Yeah. If you can guard both of them and they struggle, they lose. But with Drew Holiday, he can put up a nice, easy 20. Chris Hospozingas can actually hit that three in the corner. I think that the Celtics have one of the best-built starting lineups in all of them. What about the Knicks side of the ball? The I Knicks. mean, they aren't a pushover by any means. Oh, absolutely not. The Knicks have all the talent in the world. I mean, this team, their starting lineup, once again, they got the, they got the UConn boys. 
-hmm. This team has so much talent with Brunson, Barrett, uh, Randall, Mitchell Robinson, one of the best rim defenders. I really like this team to do something. Three, four seed, more like a four, five seed. I think the Knicks are going to be you good. You think you're a four or five seed in the East? I do. That high? I do think the Knicks. I would so, say five I mean, seed. A lot of people are saying, you know, maybe like six, seven, maybe a play-in team right in that area. Give, give me the Knicks five seed. I think five that their seed? bench, you know, Quinton Grimes coming off the bench. They got a team that not, they're easy to look over. Yeah. But they play really well together. They just kind of suck in the playoffs. Yeah. So, I mean, once they, I think they can get to that point. So, where do you slide Boston in the Eastern Conference? Do you, do you think that they're, they're the best team in the East? Yes or no from a Boston fan? Regular season, no. Playoffs, yes. Oh. Because the Bucks are known for a regular season team. They're phenomenal. They're always going to be number one, in my opinion. They, even without Dame Lillard, they're going to be number one. But I think in a seven-game series, this team will exhaust you. We saw it two years ago. Giannis Antetokounmpo, he likes to play in the bottom. He likes to mismatch with a smaller guard. But this is a team that their smaller guard is Drew Holiday. Mm -hmm. And the other smaller guard is another great defender like Jalen Brown. In a, in a seven-game series, I got the Celtics. But like in regular season, Bucks are number one in my opinion. Got you. Let's go ahead and move on to the next game then. My team now, the Indiana Pacers versus the game. Washington Wizards. They open their season at home against the Wizards for a second straight year. They lost last year, I believe, against Washington first game. Can they win this one? Yeah, they won this one. I mean, I, Washington now without Bradley Beal, you know, now yeah. it's just Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma and a bunch of role players. Yeah, uh, this team, I mean, they got the pieces, you know, with a few star powers and a few good years, a few good draft picks. The Wizards can kind of come out of nowhere. Uh, remind me of a team in baseball, um, the other Washington team, the Nationals. Mm -hmm. They have the talent, they just don't have the star power. The Pacers do have the star power. They got the home court advantage. They picked, made really good pieces this offseason with Jairus Walker. I really like this team. I think one through ten, this whole lineup is very talented. It's just can they put it together? Give me the Pacers in this one. I am very excited. As a Pacers fan, this is probably the most excited I've been since the Victor Oladipo years, maybe yeah. even the Paul George years, maybe even more than the Oladipo seasons. This is the most excited I've been in a long time for a basketball team. You put together a team with Halliburton, now Obi Toppin, Bruce Brown on the big signing, um, Miles Turner. I mean, it's just a really well put together squad and then if you look at your depth as well it's just phenomenal depth mm -hmm. on the bench with knee smith and i mean name all the players you want to there's a yeah. bunch of depth in the pacer squad this is a team that they made the trades they got rid of some of their star players to get these trades i mean we're filming this at what 5 15 yeah. i want to say the game's in an hour and 45 mm -hmm. minutes from this time i'm gonna be there me and evan are gonna be there i'm mm -hmm. very excited to go and see this game i think i know indiana's very loud when it comes to their basketball mm -hmm. it's gonna be a very fun game yeah. Uh, it's it, you know it isn't the most intriguing Pacers opening night, but you know it'll be. I think the Pacers get this one out. They get out to a nice little start. This is a playing team through yeah. and through. Playing team, you think? At right least. in the right in the border of playoff and play in. Yeah, I say think? Uh, seven or eight. Eight, eight. eight is my prediction. This team eight. has all the talent in the world. It's just once again, can they put it together? Obviously, I'm picking my Pacers. Come on, it's fair. Got to go right there. Let's go ahead and move on. Next one: Oklahoma City Thunder, Chicago Bulls. Shy, Zach Levine. Interesting matchup. Fun one. I'm excited for this one. Uh, I'm so excited to get to see Chet Holgram actually on. And this is NBA two teams court. I would say are right in like the 10-11 area in their conference maybe. Uh, I, I, I yeah. could have made for Thunder to be higher, but the Bulls may be right in that area. The only reason that the Thunder are going to be 10 or 11 is because the conference is just so much better. Yeah. But, yeah, you mean you got Shea coming off all NBA first team. You got Chet coming back. Potential you still got Giddy. Year. Still got Giddy. This team is phenomenal and just to think about the fact that they have almost all of the first round picks in every single year for the next few years i mean their entire prospect cast is a bunch of high schoolers already give them the next year or two they're going to be a contender give them four <laughs> years uh, mark my words four, four years. years 2027 ish we're gonna come back in four years and they're gonna be <laughs> nba champions this team will be nba champions nba champions in because four years nba champions because this team already has the talent to make the playoffs but then they're going to get top rookies from all these teams. I mean, you could think of some of the players. Like I know they have some of the Clippers picks, some other picks. They have a lot. Of, they have more I mean, than you can name. This honestly. team is going to. They're going to look very similar to once yeah. again another baseball reference. The Diamondbacks. Once their players get more mm. seasoned, watch out because yeah. we saw Shea. He got more seasoned. He looks great. Yeah. Giddy's going to have a breakout year this year. Chet is Chet, one of the best players I have ever watched coming out of the draft class. Who you got? Give me the Thunder. Thunder. Yeah. I'm going to agree with you. Give me the thunder. Let's go ahead and do one more in-depth game. Mavericks, Spurs, Victor Wimanyama's debut. Finally, NBA debut. He's here, uh, but he's against Luka Doncic. First game. 
Uh, Victor went by two European guys. He's gonna eat this game. Um, I don't think it's just because you know I'm not one of those people that's gonna be like Victor went by on. Oh my god, he's so me. <laughs> I'm not gonna, like like some some people have been chill out, but <laughs> he has a matchup this game. I mean, this is a team that like, I couldn't even name all three other centers. I know that they, I know them, but you know, yeah. Victor, he's t- their tallest center. I want to say like six nine. He's seven foot five. <laughs> Even you see just, this guy warming up. He looks like you know just the, the longest wingspan I've ever seen in my life. Just height alone, no one on their team can guard him. This is going to be an absolute feast of a game for him. But the real thing is, it's going to be kind of one of those shootouts. He's going to drop like 25, 30. He's going to drop like 30, 40. Kyrie Irving's still going to be there, and no one on the Spurs can guard Luca and Kyrie. No one on the Mavericks can guard him. It'll just be who can score the most. And I think that in this case, the Mavericks will be the ones that will score more. They got a few more threats. Give me the Mavericks and a close one. The Mavericks missed the playoffs last year entirely. You know, they traded for Kyrie Irving. They were up there like five or six in the Western Conference. Mm -hmm. After that, fell down to 11th, 12th, missed the playoffs entirely. Are they going to bounce back this year and be a playoff team once again, you think? I I think they'll be a playoff team. Um, This team, you know, they got the bench. I think that Kyrie's going to be more of like a rental for them. Mm -hmm. I I like Jaden Hardy coming off the bench. He's one of my favorite prospects coming into the draft a few years ago. I think that this team is going to, once they put those pieces together and they figure out what needs to be done, you know, they got a good coaching staff. They have all the pieces. They just need a real big, in my opinion, and... They try to do it with Kristaps. Kristaps is not what I mean when I say they need a real big. Neither is Christian Wood. They keep on picking up these stretch fours, stretch fives, pick up an actual dominant center. Yeah. Not one that shoots threes and is occasionally getting rebounds. Get one, not like a, no, I'm not saying like you need to get an Embiid, but like a like an Embiid. Someone that is mostly in the paint because that's where they lose their yeah. games at. If they can get the dominant center, this team will be scary. How good will he actually be? Wimanyama this season. I, some people are saying he's the second coming of Christ. I don't know about all that, but he's good. I, I think we can all agree with to say that. Yeah. He's one of the best prospects we have seen coming out of the NBA draft ever. Yeah. Seven foot five, can shoot threes. He plays with more With the of a skills, guard. I mean, he has like a point guard skill set, honestly. Yeah, a lot of times you see seven foot five people or seven foot four, you see them kind of limbering around, looking like they don't, they don't belong anywhere. They look like they're on stilts and they play like it too. He does not. He's got a beautiful spin jumper. He can shoot threes over you. He uses that height similar to KD, but he's almost, yeah. I want to say, six, seven inches taller. He's going to revolutionize defense mm-hmm. as well. His footwork is phenomenal. I think that he's going to be one of the best players that we've ever seen coming out of the draft right away. But also, fans are going to have to give him time yeah. because he's got a target on his back. Oh, he does. If Victor Wembanyama comes in and scores 15 points in his debut, they're going to be, oh, my goodness, he's awful. <laughs> so give him time. Yeah. Let him get used to the American NBA game. I think he's going to be a stud. Rookie of the year, yes or no? Yeah. You think so? I, I think even if he doesn't play up to rookie of the year standards, if he's even close, it's a popularity award kind of. Mm-hmm. The voters will give it to him, but yeah, I think you earn it, yeah. Let's go ahead and run through some of the rest of the NBA games going on. We have the Hawks and the Hornets. Give me the Hawks. Hawks? Yeah. Trey Young, do you think he's better than – I mean, Charlotte, you know, not known for their basketball, especially in recent seasons. Ever. <laughs> ever <laughs> well, ever, yeah, yeah, ever, honestly. So you think the Hawks are just better than the Hornets here? Yeah, better team, yeah. Yeah. Um, we have the Rockets Magic, not really the most enticing game, but give me the Rockets. I'm Rockets. high on the Rockets this year. I know that you I are you not, have you're been. not a big you Rockets been. guy this year. I love the way that this team is built. Give me the Rockets over the Magic for this first one. Cavs Nets. Nets, new look Nets, now with Mikel Bridges as the leading. <laughs> Nets are sneaky. They are sneaky. But the Cavs are also one of the most well built teams I've ever seen. I mean, you, <laughs> Evan Mobley, Jared Allen in the paint. Oh, like you, you better get used to shooting threes whenever you play against them because you're not getting a lot of buckets inside the yeah. paint. So I'm excited for that one. Timberwolves, Raptors. Mm. It's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, give me the Timberwolves by a tight margin. The Raptors are going to put up a fight. Yeah. But um, give me the Timberwolves. I think that you know this team's just more prepared. I'm going to agree with you. I like the Raptors a, a lot. I've always liked the Raptors, but I think Timberwolves are just a little bit better yeah. in this day and age here. Yeah. So give me, so next one is Pistons. And Heat, Miami coming off, you know, the NBA Finals appearance as an eight seed, not taking on Detroit, who could be sneaky this year. They have the youth talent if they stay healthy with Cade, with Ivy, with all those players they have on that team. They have the youth, but can they put it together? Surprise pick, give me the Pistons. 
I got a piston steel on this one. I think Under dog of the day. Yeah, they're just slightly, I want to say they're better, but I think that the Heat are coming up with a chip on their shoulder, and I think that's going to make them get a little bit over ambitious. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a T that the Pistons aren't going to be like, oh, we're better than you, yeah. but we're going to wait on you to make yeah. mistakes. If you make a lot of mistakes against us, they're going to punish you. Give me the Pistons. Give me the Heat. Pelicans, Grizzlies. For right now, I'm going to take New Orleans. They're more healthy. They have actually For now, have, for now, for now. For now, yes, for now. For now. Yeah, for now. For now. <laughs> Zion Williams is actually here. No John Morant. Um, I think the Pelicans, you know, coming in with CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram, all that talent, I think that they take this one. Agreed. I think as long as John Morant's out, Memphis is going to be a middle-of-the-table Western Conference yeah. team. They still have talent there without Jaw, but not enough to, you know, boost them over the top Western Conference teams. My prediction for the, for the Grizzlies coming through their first 25 games, give me about 13 and 12. Yeah. Like the Our definition of mediocrity. Yeah. Um, Kings Jazz. The Kings coming off a surprise year. You know, I, I mean, light the beam was yeah. the same last year. They were a three seed in the West, knocking out, you know, in the, in the, winning the first round, didn't they? Or the, or the, I think they knocked they out lost seven, the seven, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, that one, that one did hurt for a lot of Kings fans and me. I wanted the Kings to win that series, yeah. but they play the Jazz. Then they're the definition of mediocrity, the Jazz, yeah. and they're in, in their history in the last at least 10, 15 years for sure. I'm gonna say it now. We're gonna light the beam tonight. I think that press the button. Press light the, button. the beam. Light the beam. I think that the uh, the Kings they look great coming yep. into this year. The Jazz do look good too, but give me the Kings and the close one. Last one, Clippers, Trailblazers. No more Damian Lillard in this game. Hmm, that is a tough one because oh, it's not tough. One. It's Clippers. That is actually all day long Clippers. I, I'm I, I want to I'm gonna say the Clippers, but give me the Blazers and a little like the Blazers are gonna look good this night. This is a proof. The underdogs this, today. This I, I got the Clippers winning it. Yeah, but the Blazers are gonna look good tonight. They got a new look team. They have some of that 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 little bit of seasoning with a little bit of youth. It's it's nice a nice little combo. I really mm -hmm. like it. So yeah, I think that it, give me the Clippers and close one. All righty, then, so what are some game changers that you see on some of these teams that could really affect the outlook of the NBA this season? Some of these teams that I think are really going to look very different because mm -hmm. of the talent that's going to break through, Paolo Banquero, yep. he looks, he's going to be great. I mean, he he's, was the first overall pick for he a reason. He was great last year. <laughs> I personally did not want him to be first overall pick. He's kind of changed my mind a little bit. Yeah. I was team Chet, personally, but to see him you know, get a spot the way that he is. I think that he is going to be great with this Magic team, a Magic team that really doesn't have much to look forward to. He's going to play well. Another game changer I'm kind of looking at, it's also on the screen, Mr. Brunson right here. Hmm. He's playing with some of the boys that he grew up playing with. Yeah. He played with them in college. They got all the talent in the world. The Knicks are going to surprise a lot of people this year. So Jalen Brunson, I think he's going to be a game changer. Who are some game changers for you? I mean, I like down there, you see Laurie Markkinen. I mean, he was really good last year with the Jazz, an all-star. Yeah. I like him as a game changer. I think Bruce Brown is going to be a genuine changer on the Pacers squad defensively wise. I like the that. Pacers last year were not very good defensively. Head coach Rick Carlisle is not known for his defense historically yeah. as a head coach. They've yeah. struggled on defense. I think he was the right piece to bring in. He's not going to show it on the stat sheet by any means, mm, no. but the effect he has on, on the defensive side of the ball cannot be understated at and all. And the championship winning mentality that, you know, and coming the Pacers off do not getting have. a ring with Denver, I think he's going to be a huge addition to this Pacers squad along with Obi Toppin. I'm very high in the Pacers team. I cannot wait to see the outcome of the game tonight. As a Pacers fan, I know, I know you're pretty excited. I'm I excited am. for my Celtics. You know, a lot of us have been suffering. Hey, maybe the Pacers in Boston meet in the playoffs. Maybe. Hey, a uh, lot of us it's, have been... it's very possible with the 1 8 2 7 matchups. I mean, me and you were a 4 5 sport fans you know mm -hmm. all of our teams have kind of been suffering except for our main team except for our soccer teams so it's kind of you know it's kind of it's a it's a breath of fresh air to actually yeah. see our teams looking good yeah. you know Celtics Pacers both looking good coming yep. into the air let's hope that it stays yeah. that way I'm really excited yeah but that'll do it for our Grand Slam sports basketball segment we'll see how these results pan out and we'll see what records are next week but that'll do it Charles Foster I'm Jay Sodge thank you for watching